Hi, I'm Magat, a Malaysian student with SMK Section 9, Sha'alam. My grandfather suffers from Parkinson's disease. It really pains me to see him in the condition that he is in. However, it also gives me hope that, in the near future, we could see cures being developed for inherited diseases like Parkinson's thanks to developments in a field called biotechnology. So what exactly is biotechnology? Well, let's analyze. Biotechnology is a term that we can dissect. Bio comes from the Greek word vios, meaning life, and technology comes from another Greek word, technologia. But in English, we've come to use that term to refer to anything in general that can make our lives easier. So when we combine those two terms together, we come off with the impression that biotechnology is a field that uses living organisms, or at least the processes associated with living organisms, in order to create technologies and products, things that can make our lives easier. Historically, biotechnology has been responsible for leading entire medical revolutions. In 1928, a Scottish researcher, Alexander Fleming, came back from vacation to discover that the bacteria he had been growing had been totally decimated by a type of fungus. That fungus produced a compound called penicillin, which we now know as the world's first antibiotic. Since then, humans grew that fungus in large amounts, as well as many other medicine-producing organisms. So antibiotic-producing uh, organisms like penicillium are just one small example of the very diverse applications of the field of biotechnology. So a logical question to ask is, well, where do we go from here? Now, modern biotechnology is driven by developments primarily in two fields, molecular biology and computing. Molecular biology is a field that studies organisms at the teeny tiniest of levels, like for example, the genetic data within their DNA molecules. Now, developments and discoveries that we've seen in this field has led to the collection of a massive wealth of biological data. Unfortunately, actually using that biological data for something is a completely different story, and that's where computers come in. Computers, with their ever-impressive processing power, can take all that data and that mumbo-jumbo and turn it into meaningful simulations and models of biological processes. For example, the dynamics of DNA and RNA, the, fo the folding of proteins, and the interactions of metabolites, the products of metabolism. This allows us to have a much deeper and better understanding of these biological processes and hence allow us to develop the suitable technology needed in order to manipulate them for our specific needs. For example, beginning in the 1980s, we used a technology called recombinant DNA to join human DNA with the DNA of other organisms, like bacteria. By doing this, we were able to create tailor-made bacteria or other microbes that could produce human medicine. Today, hundreds of millions of people rely on this technology in order to, save, in order to uh, supply them with supplements like insulin. In the future, we could see this taken one step further thanks to technologies like CRISPR gene editing, this year's winner of the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. CRISPR gene editing promises to eliminate hereditary diseases like the aforementioned Parkinson's disease by physically altering the, the genes that cause these diseases in the first place. Unfortunately, however, it's not all sunshine and rainbows in the field of bioengineer, uh, sorry, biotechnology. For example, people hear viruses and bacteria and microbes being involved, and they go crazy, throwing accusations without doing any of their own research. You know, people and their prejudice. But on a more serious note, biotechnology faces serious ethical concerns. For example, if we just let genetically modified organisms get developed and released without any regulation, it could lead to some serious ecosystem damage if they end up completely outstripping their natural competitors and harming biodiversity, since they're so much more superior. Additionally, some people see ge genetic editing as just the first step into creating things like designer babies, which are unnatural babies chosen specifically by their parents to carry genes that make them superior cosmetically, physically, or mentally to their natural-born uh, natural counterparts. So while biotechnology is a really amazing field, we must tread carefully, otherwise it could change our dystopian fiction into reality, like Aldous Huxley's Brave New World and the eugenic source of Star Trek, which have covered genetics in great detail. So what do you think? Does biotechnology represent the next big thing in human development, or is it a field that must be regulated or even stopped before it ends us all? <laughs> I'd love to hear your opinions. I'm Magat. Thanks for watching.